Bible says, and one of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. And it was about the sixth hour, and there was a darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. I'll preach on the thought here this morning. He is hope for the hopeless, and he is help for the helpless. Let's pray. Lord, Father God, we thank you so much for meeting here with us this morning, God, and stirring hearts already here this morning, Lord. I pray, God, you minister to these folks that's here this morning, God, and help them, Lord. I pray if there's any of them that's lost, Lord, I pray, God, you'd save them. Let them see their need of a Savior, Lord. And God, I'm, help me do my feeble best to preach your Son, Jesus Christ, this morning. Make sure he's lifted up high and mighty, Lord, where he so rightly deserves to be, Lord. And God, just let me get out of the way, Lord. Let us not ponder on things of the outside world, but let's just concentrate on what you're trying to say to us this morning. And it's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. He's hope for the hopeless and he's help for the helpless. I got to thinking about the cross a lot this week. And whenever you study out the cross, the cross was the most painful and the slowest way for somebody to die. Uh, the Roman soldiers had pretty well figured it out. They created a science on this thing. The Roman soldiers wanted to inflict as much pain on somebody and as much torture on somebody as they possibly could. So the cross was probably the most worst way to die, if you will. It was a painful, it was a slow death, it was a humiliating death. And people put up there on public display in front of the whole world as everybody went by. So not only was it slow and painful, it was humiliating. It's a very humbling experience to be put upon the cross. Amen. The, it's very slow. Executions from my studies could take up to days, possibly even a week or longer, for someone to die by way of cross. Uh, the way someone died upon the cross was one of a couple different ways they believe. Uh, they don't really fully understand all they know about it. And by the way, crucifixion is still used today. Uh, in a lot of places, they still crucify people today. And they believe the way the cross works, the crucifixion works, is by asphyxiation. I mean, you cannot breathe any longer. You're suspended up there and your body gets all distorted and out of shape and out of ways and your diaphragm can't work and you cannot take in air uh, because you've just not got to strengthen your legs to lift yourself up to take a breath and pretty soon you find yourself in such a shape to where you can't even breathe anymore. And the bad part about it is that did not come instantly. That took some time for that for you to get into that kind of shape if you was on the cross. So it was a very slow, agonizing death. If you think about it, our Lord had to die that way. Not a bone of him shall be broken. If he shall be lifted up, he shall draw all men unto him. Amen. Many, many ways, the reason that pointed to the cross for the way that our Lord had to die. Upon thinking upon the cross, though, you get to thinking along this line. And there was no hope for somebody on that cross. There was no hope for them. And Brother Brad, it, it wasn't, let's put you on the cross for a couple hours, suspend you up there and just humiliate you and you serve your time and you come back down. No, there was no hope for anybody on that cross. Whenever you was condemned to die by the way of crucifixion, guess what? That was a death sentence and you was going to die. There was no hope for you after that point in time. There's no appeal to come in from Caesar. There's no way anybody could crawl up there and take you down off that cross and you go on about your merry little way. No, friend, whenever you was condemned to be put on the cross, there was absolutely no hope for you once you were suspended up there. No hope. Now, that's along the lines of what I got to thinking on. The Lord dealt with me on, on about this man here who was there with the Lord Jesus Christ. When someone was going to be crucified... They wasn't going back home afterwards. The cross was it. 
You come to that point, you was nailed down or tied down, however they chose to do it for that day, and that was it. There was no hope for you. I want you to notice here a way of introduction, first of all, here this morning. We see a man who just wanted Christ to save his flesh. Amen. I told you it wasn't going to be nothing new, nothing real deep this morning. We see a man here who just wanted Christ to save his flesh. In verse number 39, one of the malefactors was hanging railed on him saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. Amen. That's the only thing he wanted. He just wanted help out of this tight spot at that very particular time in which he was at. Amen. Can I tell you something? A lot of folks like that today. They just want Christ to fix the problem and where they're at and where they've gotten themselves into at that very point in time and then they want nothing else to do with the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And that's where this man right here had gotten himself. This man had found himself upon an old Roman cross and he looked over at Jesus Christ and said, if you are him, save thyself and us. Amen. He wasn't none concerned about him being Lord of Lords and King of Kings. He was just looking for a way to get his flesh out of the trouble that he had gotten himself into. A lot of folks like that today. Now, ain't nothing changed. <laughs> they find themselves in trouble <laughs> and they don't want Jesus Christ as Lord. They just want Jesus Christ the quicker fixer upper, amen. That's all they want. They don't care that Christ is sitting there hanging beside along what side with him, paying for his sin debt, amen. He don't care nothing about that. He just wants somebody to get him out of the trouble he's in right now. Dare I even say there's some of the Baptist variety like that too. They just wanted Jesus to so take out of their pocket. Say, all right, Jesus, get me out of the trouble I've got myself into. Fix me right now. Amen. He's just looking for a fix for the trouble he's gotten himself into. A lot of folks are like that around today. They just want God to help them out. That's all they want. They're missing the fullness of salvation, amen. You see the man who wanted Christ just to save his flesh. We see another man who wanted Christ to save his future. In verse number 42, the Bible says, And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. I underlined that word, Lord, about four times here in my notes this morning. He referred to him as Lord. I know we're living in a day and age, Brother Keith, amen, lordship, salvation, amen, just going out the door. We don't want Christ to rule and reign over us, amen. We don't sit a hundred times behind his pulpit, amen. We don't want this man to rule over us. That same crowd still running around today as well, amen. But this man right here, he saw something different. He wasn't none concerned about his flesh. He knew that there was no hope and no help for his flesh. He was more concerned about his future and he calls Jesus Lord. I believe that's very significant in that passage right there. Lord. I believe if you're truly saved and you want him, he will be your Lord. Amen. He said, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. This man had reverence to God in verse 40. Dost not thou fear God? This man had found himself in a place where he had no hope. And he had no help. And yet he had reverence to God. I believe I read over in the book of James. Thou believest there is one God, thou do as well. The devils believe and tremble. This man right here is reverencing God. We live in a society today that does not reverence God. You see, the one who reverenced God, amen, was not the one who was just wanting his flesh rescued. He was the man who was wanting his future rescued. He reverenced who God actually was. Does thou not fear God, amen? I believe we ought to be fearing God. You say, well, we're saved, we're separated, we're sanctified, we're on our way to heaven. Hey, that's even more reason for us to fear God. Amen. You best be fearing him. He loves us, amen. 
but we best be fearing him. Because guess what? Here's a news flash for you. Do, 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 do. Come in, Tokyo. Guess who's keeping your heart beating? Guess who's keeping oxygen in the air? Amen. It's him. Guess who's keeping the earth just far enough away from the sun to keep us from getting cooked? Amen. It's him. Guess who's holding the Atlantic Ocean back over there about three hours from here? Amen. It ain't the sandbars. It's him. Amen. He's keeping it all in control. It's Him, and we need to reverence Him and thank Him, amen. Recognize who He is, amen. We see a man who reverenced God in verse 40, Dost, thou, dost not thou fear God? This man knew the reality of what was going on around him in verse 40 as well. Seeing thou art in the same condemnation. Can I tell you something? I see the steps of someone getting saved right here. Say amen if you're with me on that one. He reverenced who God was and then he had a reality of what was going on. Amen. Seeing thou art in the same condemnation. This man wasn't ignorant of what in the world was going on around him. This guy knew who he was and he knew where he was at. Amen. He recognized what was going on around him. He knew that he was helpless. He knew that he was without hope. Amen. He paid reverence to God. Amen. And he recognized the seriousness of the situation. Now we're in the same condemnation. It is a good day. Mark her down. Whenever you as a lost individual realize, amen, that you are in the same condemnation, amen, as the rest of the world, that without Jesus Christ, you're going to die and you're going to go to a devil's hell. It's a good day when you come to that realization. Instead of just going around like everybody else, oh, I'm fine, I'm fine. Anybody's ever spent five minutes out on the street, amen, witnessing anybody, amen, how many times have you heard, I'm fine. I'm fine. You need to wake up, pull your head out the sand and realize, amen, you're in the same condemnation as the rich man who's burning in hell right now. You need to realize these things. He had a reality of what was going on. <laughs> he realized he was condemned. And this man also recognized his guilt. In verse 41, and we indeed justly, for we receive the due rewards of our deeds. He realized he was in condemnation. And instead of trying to pass the buck off on somebody else, Wesley, he says, and we indeed justly. Whenever the hounds of heaven get on your trail, amen, and you realize that you are lost, amen, you realize that you sin against the holy God, best thing for you to do is just say, and I do indeed justly. You see, now, wait a minute. Don't, don't, don't go shutting me out. Listen to me. I can't help but wonder if there ain't a lot of people, amen, that's just sorry that they got caught. Got caught at what they was doing. Got caught with their hand in the cookie jar, amen. And God blows by their way and like, oh, well, yeah, God you caught me dead right on this one. But can I tell you something? True godly sorrow that leadeth under repentance, amen. That's the kind that you're sorry that you're sinning against a holy and righteous God, amen. Regardless whether you get caught or not, amen. That right there is godly sorrow. Saying, God, I'm sorry, amen, you caught me doing this, but God, I'm sorry for all this back here that you let me slide under the radar on. That right there, church, whenever you get a hold of that and God shows you that you're a sinner and that you're sinning against a holy and a righteous God, he draws you into repentance and says, yeah, I deserve this indeed justly. Not because of what you caught me doing, amen, but because of what you let me slide by with. Now, God, you spoke to my heart, amen. I realize I am guilty for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. 
This man recognized his guilt. You know, it's hard to get anybody to recognize their guilt. Let's just be honest about this. We think about things that happen in our house, amen. Something happened, we just point the finger that way. Point that way, point that way, point that way. Guess what? Wesley's the littlest one in the house, amen. It usually all falls down on him somehow. No, the fact of the matter is you need to start taking accountability for your actions, amen. amen. Little one, big one, amen. Everything in between, old, young, amen. Start being accountable to God for what you've done. It ain't your mama, it ain't your daddy, it ain't your sister, it's you in need of the prayer, amen. I'm sure the high sheriff could tell us some tales. Uh, and Brother Keith, you've been in jail there ministering all these men. Ain't no guilty people in jail, is it? <laughs> Just as we live in a day where there is no more sinners to hear the world tell it. I was out preaching in front of a civic center down in Huntington, West Virginia. Hey, Amen. We was out there some cold more or so cold night one night. Me and my whole family was out there. Praise God. You talk about looking like cult. We look like it. Amen. We was out there, girls dressed right. Amen. Holding scripture signs, passing out tracts. Out there preaching like a wild man. Why was you there? Because nobody else was. Amen. And a group of lesbians came by. I said, you mind if I share the gospel with you? You realize you're a sinner in need of saving. And they looked at me right square in the hairy eyeball and said, I'll have you know we're not sinners. That is the mentality. Hey, God Almighty said, all have sinned, all have sinned, all have sinned. That excludes nobody. A young, old, amen, middle-aged, black, white, yellow, red, amen. We all sinners in the sight of God Almighty. It's time that we stand up and take accountability for just who we are. I say, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I'm a sinner, God. This guy right here, he recognized his guilt. That's a big step in somebody getting saved. I believe, amen, that people can reverence who God is. I believe they can have a reality of what's going on, amen. But a lot of things that lock people up and keep them from being born in the family of God is they will not recognize their own guilt. Amen, preacher. They will not recognize their guilt. And thinking, well, because I was born in the greatest land of the nation, amen, I, I, no, 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 amen. Kings and queens have got to come by the way of the cross, amen. amen. Just the same as the poor man has got to come by the way of the cross, amen. No one is excluded, amen. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no man, no man, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. I don't care who you are. I don't care what your last name is. I don't care what position you hold in society. Amen. I don't care if you can trace your family roots back a thousand generations over in jolly old England. Amen. And you got some long lost king in your family. It don't matter if you're going to go to heaven. Amen. You need to know Jesus Christ is your Savior. Amen. amen. And I say that without apology this morning. This man recognized his guilt. This man was also brought to remembrance the guiltlessness of Jesus. This man brought to remembrance the guiltlessness of Jesus. Verse 41, but this man hath done nothing amiss. In other words, this guy knew who Jesus was. How word traveled to the cross, I have no idea. I don't know. I don't think they had Facebook back then. Thank God for it. Amen. Amen. But somehow or another, this man that was on this cross caught wind that this man, there is no guile in him. There is nothing wrong with that man that's sitting here hanging up between you and I. There is nothing wrong with him. He is sinless. Amen. He is perfect. He is the Christ. Amen. Somebody whispered it to him. I wasn't there, but I'd say the Holy Ghost blew by his way. Amen. <laughs> Amen, brother. What another that one, two, three, repeat after me, junk. This man brought in remembrance the guiltlessness of Jesus. See, this man is exactly who he says he is. This man hath done nothing amiss. Amen. The only crime Jesus was guilty of, amen, was just being Jesus, amen. Being who he said he was. 
the son of the living God. And reckon the Jewish Jews religious thing they had going on. Amen, like a better terms. They didn't like his thinking. They didn't like his preaching. So let's hang this man on a tree. And we got a 20-minute introduction. We got a five-minute message here for you this morning. Jesus is hope for the hopeless and help for the helpless. This man on the cross that we've been speaking of this morning, he knew his only hope was the Lord Jesus Christ. He realized that he had no hope outside of God's only begotten. He knew he was condemned. He knew he wasn't coming down off of that cross. He knew he wasn't going home. He knew he was condemned. He knew he was in trouble, amen. And he knew he didn't have a buddy on the inside that could get him out. So he looks all around and he sees his buddy, his buddy hanging over there on the other tree, amen, and says, well, he's just in the same predicament I am. He ain't going to be no help. He looks at those walking by underneath of him, amen, and, and what God did, probably a bunch of, of religious people walking by underneath of him, Levites, priests, amen, because they was all there watching Jesus die, amen, wagging their heads and, and railing upon him as well, amen. So he's looking at all them and he realized religion couldn't help him, amen. Amen, church. He realized the religious people couldn't help him. Now, I don't know if he's on the right or on the left. Amen. My mind's running 10,000 miles an hour. I don't believe the Lord's silent on him. Amen. But I'm sure he looked over here to one side. And there he saw the Lord of glory. And says, you know, I believe he can help me. I believe he can help me. There ain't no hope in this flesh. Amen. And to this day, they still ain't no hope in this flesh. Amen. But this guy is more concerned about hope for his never dying soul, amen. And he looks over at Jesus Christ and he says, Remember thou me when I come in paradise. Remember thou me. He knew his only hope was Jesus. The only hope you have today is Jesus Christ. And again, yeah, I'm one of them preachers that believe Jesus can fix anything. I believe that. He helped this man on the cross. And I sure as well don't see where he brought him down to baptize him either. Can I just throw that in there, amen, for two more cents? He didn't bring him down to baptize him. Amen. He realized he had no hope outside Jesus. He knew only Jesus could help him. His friends couldn't help him. And can I tell you something? No matter how bad you want to help somebody, I know this is hard preaching, no matter how bad you want to help somebody, whether they be your friends or whether they be your family, and you don't want them to die and go to hell, amen, you cannot save them. As bad as I would love to be able to save everybody I come in contact with, I ain't got the ability to save one blessed soul, and you ain't either, amen. So quit acting like you do. Friends couldn't help him. His family couldn't help him. Amen. His finances couldn't help him. Finances ain't going to help you either. I believe if I read my Bible correctly, as a rich man that's in hell. Always giving, couldn't get it. Amen. The only thing that helped this man was what led up into this whole message right here was him realizing he was a sinner. Him recognizing who Christ was. And him repenting, amen. You say repenting, I don't see where he repented in there. You don't see that? You need to ask God to help you. I don't see the word repent in there. Well, I believe I don't see the exact word, but I see the principle laid down. Amen, amen, and amen. I believe if you're going to come to Christ, you're going to have to repent. You're going to have to acknowledge him. And you're going to have to call upon him. Amen. For all of sin. And lastly here in this. He knew only Jesus could help him. And this man got some help. I believe that. I, I believe that. And, and, and I know it's not written down in the scriptures. And I don't believe I'm adding anything to the scriptures. I'm just speaking from my personal experience here. I believe the last few moments of this man's life was his best. 
Anybody want to argue me on that one? He got born again. Jesus promised him he'd be in paradise today. I believe from that point on until they came and broke his legs and he quit breathing, amen. I believe those are the best last minutes that guy had in his whole entire life, amen. And I say that from my personal experience. Sure, I might have some times that I thought was good times back there when I was lost, amen, but the fact of the matter is they wasn't nothing but misery, pain and misery in my life. Hey, these last handful of years, they've been great, amen. I wouldn't trade them for nothing. You say, well, he's suspended there on a cross. He was nailed up. He's in misery. He's in pain. Yeah, but he knew, amen, Miss Patsy, it was well with his soul. And there wasn't nothing nobody could do about that. Wouldn't have been something. While there on that cross, those last few hours he was there, he just started singing Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound. It saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Hey Amen. Wouldn't it be great if maybe we could just use our imaginations for just a moment and just think, boy, this old guy here, he was hurting physically. He was hurting spiritually. Hey Amen. There forever so long. And then all of a sudden, Jesus Christ came by his way. And can I tell you something? The worst day of his life became his best day. Hey Amen. Hallelujah. Because he met the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Just because you're having a bad day right now, don't let that ruin it for you. Your worst day could be your best day. Yeah, that's what I should have titled the message. Your worst day can be your best day. Amen. Amen. Your worst day can be your best day. Jesus Christ, he's help for the helpless and hope for the hopeless. Let's stand to our feet. Sister Lynn, you can come play something for us this morning.